Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of AWS Lambda event filtering using a SQS queue as a source and Lambda function as our consumer. So I went through the liberty of creating the Lambda function and the SQS queue prior to the video, so you don't have to watch me do that. Uh, just to talk about some initial configuration, just so everyone is on the same page. Here in my function, I have some very basic IAM credentials going to configuration. You can see I have an SQS policy template, template role. If we click on this in a new tab, you'll see that it just has some basic uh, Lambda SQS polar permissions. This was based on the suggested IAM policy template uh, that's provided to you when you create your Lambda function. If you just search for SQS, it was the one that was specified there. But here are the permissions. If you look at, uh, I believe it should be, uh, yeah, here it is. So delete message, get queue attributes, and receive messages on all SQS queues in the account. So that's the initial configuration. And over on the other side, um, actually, before I go there, let's just take a look at the code really quick. This code does nothing. All it does is print the event. This will be relevant later on because we're going to be taking a look at the input and the output. Uh, but just so you know, that's what this event or that's what this code does. Now, if we take a look at the queue, we just have a very basic SQS queue, just called orders. And there's currently no messages available and no messages in flight. So this is starting from scratch. Okay, so let me drag over in my other window here, my editor, just to show you the event. Oops, that didn't work. I don't know why. Okay, strange. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So this is the event that I'm going to be passing in to my queue. So you can see it's an e-commerce type uh, application. So order type purchase, order ID, uh, something amount is uh, double here, customer ID and a destination address. And the thing that we want to filter on is the order type, because in this example, we can have two different types of orders. We can have either a purchase or a refund. But in this Lambda function that I created, I do not want the refund events. I only want the events that have purchase in the order type. And the rule that we need to specify when we create the trigger between the, uh, create the event source rather, between the Lambda function and the queue, uh, we need to specify a special setting here that's now under the advanced section when you uh, create the subscription. And if you look at the filter rule that I'm specifying down here, like take a look at this part first, order type purchase, and it's actually an array here. That's the, the syntax that you need to use or a list rather. Um, so that's the, the syntax. And in addition, the higher order uh, key is something called body. And the reason that is, is because the event that gets passed into the Lambda function is this. This is the event that gets passed into the Lambda and you see it's under records, but the actual content is here under the body field. And this is where order type is as purchase, order ID, blah, 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 blah. Everything that we just looked at in the previous step. So this is why we're specifying the body key as our main entry point. For whatever reason, you don't need to specify records. This took me a long time to figure out. I don't know why it works this way, but that's just how it works. And that's how I got it going. So that's uh, what we have here. I'm just going to drag this back to my other window now so I can refer to it later. And now what we need to do is we just need to set up that event source mapping in this purchase event processor. And then we're going to test everything out to make sure this works. Uh, so when you in the Lambda section, go ahead and click on add trigger. We're going to select a trigger now and I'm just going to search for SQS. There it is. And it's going to ask us for our queue here. So our queue is called orders. Batch size, I'm going to put this to one because I only want to process one at a time. But I think the same thing will work if you use any number greater than one here. You scroll down a bit, there's uh, additional settings. Now this is where the new feature is hidden where you need to specify that rule. So I'm going to click on this. And in the filter criteria, you can go ahead and click on this link if you want to learn more. That's where I'm going to paste in that filter rule that we just had in front of us. Now make sure that when you paste this in, there's no spaces, there's no tabs, there's no nothing. I realized when testing this out was that initially I had this formed in like, you know, with tabs and spaces based on how you would think a normal JSON object looks like, but those hidden characters mess up the filter criteria here for some reason. So uh, if you're ever experiencing some kind of issue where the event is not getting uh, into your Lambda function, that may be why. So make sure there's no spaces or any other hidden characters that are in your filter criteria here. You can also add multiple different ones if you want to have, you know, 
five or more or so uh, filter criteria. I do believe there is a limit though, so it's not up to infinity. So just keep that in mind if you want to have more than that. All right, so we're going to leave enable trigger as on. So this stuff is wired together right off the get go. I'm going to click on add. And if you get an error when you click on add related to doesn't have permissions, blah, 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 blah. It's because you didn't associate the Lambda function with that policy that has the receive, the send, and the other uh, policy permission that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So make sure it has all those things or else this won't work. So I'm going to click on add. You can see mine was successful. And now you can see here uh, under the triggers, we have event source of SQS. If you click on this, uh, it'll show you, it'll bring you to the trigger section actually in the configuration tab. And now you can expand this and you can see a little bit of details about it. You can see that it is currently creating. And while it's creating, it does not show the filter rule that we just created. So I'm just going to refresh this and hopefully, yeah, okay, so it's enabled. So now you can see what it did. It basically took what I put in, which was like this right here. And it stuffed it into a filters uh, or JSON object that has filters as the key. And then it's an array. Then I have one pattern, which is this one. Now I did learn that you can't modify this. You need to, uh, if you want to change it, you need to go ahead and delete this. So you would go click on this and then go to delete and then create a new one. Unfortunately, there's no modification support for this. It's immutable. All right, so that's good for our uh, trigger here. So now what I want to go and do is go to the SQS side and send a message that looks like what I had previously. Let me just show you uh, what I'm going to grab here. So this is what I'm grabbing. And again, make sure that this is well formed. There's no spaces. There's no hidden characters. There's nothing that's going to screw this up or else you may have an issue where the events aren't showing up. So I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to send a message once with purchase, which should trigger the Lambda function. I'm going to change this to refund, which should not trigger the Lambda function. And then we're going to go and take a look at the CloudWatch logs to make sure that it only got invoked once. And it's going to print out the event. So we should be able to tell pretty easily that it's working correctly. So I copied that to my clipboard. I'm going to put that back over there. So now let's go over to my other tab where my SQS queue is. Uh, okay, they changed the UI for this recently. So yeah, so clicking on this guy and send and receive messages. Yeah. All right. So here's where we paste in the content of our message. So I'm going to paste in that purchase and we're going to click on send message. All right. That's sent successfully. I'm just going to change this now to refund and we're going to do the same thing. Send message. And now let's go back to our Lambda function. And if you go to the monitor section, I found that it takes some time for the logs and the metrics to show up here. So like, yeah, you see it takes up to five minutes or so for this to be propagated with all the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view logs in CloudWatch. Okay. And this should show up the log group now. Okay. So here's the log group for the purchase event processor. And if you click, I'm not sure what I just clicked there. I apologize. If you click on the log stream now, and if you recall, we just printed out the event. You can see there's only one entry here, start of the request, end of the request. There's not two. And if we expand the body here, because remember we printed out the event, you can see order type here is of type purchase. So I'm going to go back quick to the SQS section. We can send a whole bunch of other refunds if we want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many that you want. Uh, we're going to go back here really quick and just take a look at this again, refresh this, and you should see that there's still no other events that are present and it's only going to be the purchases because we set up that event filter. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the other ones I have on AWS Lambda and thanks so much for watching.